on in chapter uh, 3, describing systems in the time domain, and we are now in section 3.2, memory and causality. In this section, we will look at the mathematical meaning of memory, we'll define a memoryless system, talk about how you check system properties, and then we'll look at the definition of causal systems. So first of all, the mathematical meaning of memory. Here is a system, input x, output y. And suppose the system is given by an expression y of t is x of t minus 4 plus x of t plus x of t plus 2. Well, let's consider time t to be the present. And if that's the case, then time t minus 4 is always the past. For example, if time t is 7, then t minus 4 is 3. It's in the past. No matter what t is, that's the, that's the case. If the system also depended on x of t, well then that's the present. It's the same as the time t for y of t. And the time t plus 2 is the future. Now what does this have to do with memory? Well, if a system depends on the past, it needs memory. It has to store the values of those past that occurred in the past so that it can compute the values in the present. If a system only depended on the present, then you wouldn't need any memory because you wouldn't need to store anything. You could just use the current value and that would be fine. Now, this is where it gets a little strange. It's hard for us to picture systems that depend on the future. But if a system did depend on the future, you would still need to somehow store it to be able to use it in the present. Try not to think about that too hard. Now, here is our definition of a system that is memoryless. For all inputs x and for all times t, the output y of t can only depend on the input x of tau at time tau equals t. In discrete time, it's very much the same definition. For all inputs x and all times n, the output y of n can only depend on the input x of m at time m equals n. So what these systems are basically saying is that they can only depend on the present. They cannot depend on the future. They cannot depend on the past. If they ever depend on the future or the past, then the system will require memory. Now this little picture on the bottom is just an example of a real-world memoryless system. Uh, if you've ever had some exposure to toddlers, you know that they often behave like memoryless systems. Now, memoryless systems then have no dependence on past or future. No storage of inputs is required. In contrast, systems with memory, at least one possible output depends on the future or the past. Now as we talk about whether a system has this memoryless property or not, it's a good point to talk about system properties in general. Uh, what I'm about to share is extremely important. Uh, it's very, very critical that you understand. This is, this is fundamental properties of logic, actually, here. To show a property is true, it must be shown that it is always true. To show a property is false, a single example showing that it is false is all that is needed. What does this mean? It means that you can prove something false with a single example, but you can't prove something true with a thousand examples. That simply isn't going to work. Uh, an example, if someone told you that all monkeys have tails, well, to prove that false, all you have to do is go get a monkey, cut off his tail, and present him. You have your one example that proves it's false. To prove that all monkeys have tails is actually pretty difficult. You would have to get all the monkeys in the world and line them up and show that they all have tails. So how does this apply to checking, checking our memoryless property? Well, if we're going to make a claim that something is true, we have to show that it's always true. If we're going to claim that it's false, we just need to come up with a single example. So let's try that on this example. You can see the system there. And the question is, is the system memoryless? So the answer is the system actually is memoryless because y of t always depends on x of t at time t only. Okay, you can see x of t right there, and x of t is squared right there, but they both are x of t. They're the present. Now, when you looked at the problem, maybe you thought, the system was not memoryless because of the cosine t plus 1. 
That's not time t after all. It's time t plus 1. Well, only what is inside x matters. The definition of the memoryless property is that the output y depends on the input x. Keywords, input x, only at time t. If there's other functions of t flying around, that is, has nothing to do with whether the system is memoryless or not. So even though there is a cosine t plus 1 here, the system is memoryless.